So welcome, I will be showing you how to make a combo system with the use of tools. And for this example I'm going to use a weapon, but it also works on a different mechanic like punching. But yeah, let's get to it. And this axe doesn't have anything except welds and PBR. And if I put it inside of the starter pack and do a playtest, it's just going to work like a normal tool. And I had to change my avatar because the one I was using had a different tool grip and the axe was like rotated a bit towards a different direction. But yeah, right now if I press on it, it's not doing anything, so that's what we have to set up. But before that, we can make few animations. So I'm going to go into the avatar tab and then just press on the rig builder and I'm going to choose R15 and select the blocky avatar. So we have the rig right there and we can put the battle axe inside of the rig. So now he's going to be holding it. And now we just open the animation editor and press on the rig, like so. And we can name this one attack animation and yeah. And this tutorial is only for the combo system. I'm going to make a full combat system guide sometime in the future, but yeah. So in an idle animation and let's just make three attack animations, right? So yeah, it looks kind of janky, but we can just leave this as our idle animation. So now we just have this, right? We can just copy and paste it somewhere, like at the 20 frame mark. And we need to press on the toggle looping animation, so it's gonna be looping. And we also need to set the animation priority to be action. Now we need to click on the three dots again and publish the animation to Roblox. And I'm going to name this one idle tutorial one. And then I can copy the ID, close this, then go to the other battle axe. And we can add a folder and name this one animations. And just a few animations, so this is the idle. And we can just paste in the animation ID right there. Then we can just set up the attack, so this one will be the attack 1, attack 2 and attack 3. Then we can go back to the controller again and delete the end frames right here. And I have the moon animator right there so I could, you know, easily just rotate the axe. But I am not going to do that since it's a paid plugin and not everyone has it. But yeah. So please you need to wind up the attack and then do the attack animation. And you can also disable the looping. Right, so I'm just gonna speed things up. So we have our guy just doing like this quick motion right there, right? I'm not gonna animate the legs for the purpose of this tutorial, right? But I just want to show you that this is the last frame that you want to stop on to move on to the next animation. You can see that here we have the wind up and then he's attacking with the axe. That's also what you want to do for the next animation to have a clean, smooth transition, right? So we have to export this animation again and make sure it's not looping, right? We publish it to Roblox, attack one tutorial. 
and I can copy the ID and put it right there. But before we edit anything, right, we need to make sure that all of our animations are at the same timestamp. So this one has 16 frames. To make it easier, I can just make it 15 instead. Right, so the next animation we make also have to have 15 frames. Because if it doesn't, we'll have to make different checks during the combos. And that would just make everything harder, so yeah. So now when you have this keyframe selected, right, and copied, we can just delete everything and paste them in. So again, starting from this animation, we just have to transition into another and do a different hit. Right, so again, this is the second animation, and again, 15 frames, and just save it to Roblox. Attack 2, copy, close, and put it right here. Oh, and yeah, before you delete everything, make sure that this whole line right here is full of keyframes, because this left lower arm, right, it doesn't have a keyframe, and if I just delete everything, you can see that it's going like this. So yeah, I should have mentioned it earlier, but yeah, you can just copy this keyframe from here and paste it there. And just delete and move it back.
Right, so this is the last animation, so just publish it, copy and paste it in. So yeah, now we have all of our animations and let's add a local script into the tool. We can name this one tool and yeah, let's go to scripting now. So first we need to get the animations from the folder and let's make a local function and call it setup. We need a table inside of this script which will hold all of our animations. So we can make anim session is equal to an empty table. And now let's add a for loop inside of the setup that will loop through all of the animations and since everything is static there is a lot of ways where we can just assign a index for the animation right but we also have the idle animation but no matter what we're gonna have four animations inside of this folder so we can do if animation that name is equal to idle then and we can give the animation session of index 4 the animation and else we just get the number from the name so we can do local index is equal to string.gsub and we want to just leave the digits from the animation name so our string is going to be animation name the pattern is going to be percent %d for digits and the replacement is going to be empty right if i fire the function at the end and just print out the index you can see it's printing out two three and one and that's from the animation names but these two, three, and one are string values and not numbers. So we need to do to number index inside of the anim session is equal to the animation, right? And then after I print out the anim session after the setup, we are going to have this table right here, which is going to have numbers and the animations. Right? You can see attack one is index one, two is two, and three is three, and idle is four. Right? So that's the setup, and now we just need the combo. So I can add another function and name this one on active and connect it to the tool activated event. Right? And right now, to make the combo system, we basically have to have few variables. There is the current click, current cooldown, and also a combo break. And of course we need to add an attack streak. And all of them are going to operate on a clock. So you can also do clock is equal to os.clock. Like so. And now you can guess that we are going to refer to the animation session from the attack string as an index to play the animations. But yeah, so the combo break can be like one second for now. But firstly, before I forget, um, right now it's not going to play our animations because they aren't loaded inside of the humanoid. So we have to also load it inside of the setup function. And we require the local player, so we need player service for that. And local player just player service that local player and we need to also wait for the player's character to load so you can do character is equal to local player dot character and if he doesn't find it we can do or local player dot character added and wait so the humanoid is equal to character and find fish side of class humanoid right and after that we need the animator which is instead of the humanoid Right, and then just in case you can do if hum and animator, then and just put everything there. Right now, instead of assigning the animations inside of the session like this, while having the animator, we have to do animator and load animation, and then the animation instance, like this. And now this stores the animations that are loaded inside of our character, which will allow us to play the animations from this function right here. And let's use it also make a function on tool equip and tool unequipped to play the idle animation right we just do anim session from index for play and anim session from index for stop i also forgot to load the animation right here so now whenever we equip it we should be playing our animation so yeah it's playing the idle animation right now whenever i equip it and now let's actually move to the combo the first check we have to do is if our attack is on cooldown so you need to do if clock minus current click is more or equal than current cooldown then and we also need to set the current cooldown to maybe 0.03 seconds i mean 0.3 seconds and now whenever the current click is gonna be more than the combo break it's going to break our combo so again we need this line right here is more than combo break then we set the attack streak to be zero else we add one to the attack streak Right, and before we do anything else, we want to also reset the attack streak. If it reaches a certain number, in our case it's going to be 3, 
so you can do if math dot f mod to basically do as it says return the reminder of the division of x by y so from attack streak divided by three is equal to zero then we want to do attack streak is equal to zero right and then we want to set the current click to be clock and right here is whenever you would activate the hitbox or play the animation so we need to do the animation session from attack streak and this one is going to be plus one because we don't have animation zero and then play right but that's not everything but i'm gonna just showcase it just so it works this is the first one second one and the third one as you can see but they look kind of scuffed we don't have any smooth transitions and yeah but in the play method right we have the fade time which we can set to like 0.5 and the wait well the animation wait in short is basically just this so you can set it to attack streak and just so each different attacks has more influence over the next one we can just set the weight to be attack streak plus five let's say right and then speed we don't have to change it's gonna be one right we can just play test it right now right and i'm gonna press on attack see it looks a bit different and that's because we also have the idle animation playing in the background we also have to set the idle animation to a really low weight so we can set the fade time to be 0.5 and the weight to be let's say 0.1 right so now if we play test it everything should be working fine right so this is the first attack this is the second one and the third one you can see that the character is having a bit of a spasm but yeah i just didn't do the animation properly but yeah just to see everything clearer i'm just gonna do some prints in here this can be set to like took too long here we can do playing this animation and here i can do print resetting combo i'm gonna pull up the console and let's see So yeah, you can see like the first one is took too long because we set zero to be zero. <laughs> but anyway, you can see one, two and three. Then resetting combo one, two and three. Right, I'm gonna wait a bit. And it said took too long playing attack one. Playing attack one and yeah, one, two and three basically. Right now I am able to just click it really fast and I shouldn't be. So let's change that. So I will need to change the current cooldown to be maybe 0.4, right? Because you have to take in account the fade times, the animation transitions, and yeah. So 1, 2, and 3. As you can see, I'm able to just spam it a bit less, so probably 0.5 would work instead. Wait, do I have collisions? Oh, I had collisions enabled on the axe, so maybe that's why we're having a spasm. Yeah, that was exactly it. So yeah, you can see that our character is doing a animation combo and yeah. Like I said, the system I want to show in the future is gonna work on animation keyframes. So the hitbox is going to activate on a certain timestamp during the animation. But yeah, this should just give you an idea of how to basically just handle everything. But yeah, before this video ends, I need to announce that right now I am working on a Discord server. I don't have everything set up yet, but yeah, there will be an announcement video of that soon. And same with channel memberships. So be on a lookout for that if you are interested. And yeah, that's going to be everything for today then. Hope you had a nice day and see ya guys.